want to find that drive and focus that has you locked in and on fire every single day, my book, The Mirror Motivation, will do it for you. I bought a copy for you. You take care of the shipping. The book is free. Click the link down there. I got you. Straight all day. Stay all day. It's an amazing day because you are tuned in to the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there even when the success you've expected to achieve is yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you are acquiring, you are getting, you are being, you will activate. That's the best word to use. Your personal initiative. This is the go-getter energy within all of us that moves any of us to go and make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. We put all of these elements together into one package and what you get is the mindset, the method, the podcast, the philosophy, the book known as Work On Your Game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day and welcome to the show. Today's topic, we're going to talk about who the winners are in life. Often the winners are the people who keep going. It's as simple as that. Now while we know that life is short, at the same time life is long right? people always like to say that life is short but doesn't it feel like you've been alive for a long time can't one week be a really long time you got something you're really looking forward to happening next week it could be a really long week that you got to get through before you get to that day or something at the end of today the whole day could be very long life is short but life is also long at the same time and those who win are usually those who keep going during those long periods because even though time is a constant it goes at the exact same pace all the time it never goes faster and never goes slower we all we all can understand that there are times in life when it feels like the time just flies by and there are times in life when we feel like the time is going way 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 too slow but it never changes it's just a matter of our perspective and how we're feeling the state that we're in how fast time is going in a moment and here's the thing in life when you have a big goal a big ambition you're going after something that most people would never even think of going after let alone being able to achieve there are going to be periods of a long time where the time, again, is still going at the same pace as always, but it's gonna feel like it's going very slowly because your achievements, your accomplishments, your outcomes are very slow to arrive. They're very slow to be realized if they're gonna be realized at all. You're thinking they're slow to be realized, but you haven't even gotten to the realization part yet. So you're not sure if this is slow or this is like, maybe you should have quit a long time ago. So you're not quite sure. Well, let me refer you to a few episodes that you should get yourself familiar with. And if you're a member of the gang group, we're giving you a 14 day trial to the, as a member. So there's no reason why you should not go and get yourself privy, make yourself privy to these following episodes. Cause in the gang group is the only place where you can listen to them. Episode number 314, how to play and win the long game of life. Episode number 254, long-term success requires long-term work. Episode number 232, how long are you willing to work without recognition? Episode number 116, winning in the long run. All of those, again, if you go to workonmygame.com slash game group, the link is below in the show notes, wherever you're watching this, you can join the game group, get a two week free trial, get access to all 1300 episodes of this podcast, plus about 100 other things that I'm not even mentioning right now that you can read about, join the game group. We'll talk about that later. Let's get into our points here today. Today is about the stick to that will keep you going through those long time periods in life because the winners are those who keep going. Point number one, most people want instant gratification. Just as a general rule, most human beings in general throughout their whole lives, all they seek and the only reason they take action is for instant gratification. At the same time, even us, me and you, who are listening to this, you who listen to this right now, me who is talking right now, we often want instant gratification. We often make decisions based on what we can get right now in the moment. Not what we'll get a year from now, but what we'll get right now. And whether you want to admit it or not, all of us at times make instant gratification decisions. The difference between the successful person and the unsuccessful person is that we, me and you, we can catch ourselves when we are thinking some instant gratification thoughts and we can be, we are disciplined enough to say, you know what? Yes, I would get instant gratification if I ate this bag of Skittles right now, but instead I'm going to eat this raw spinach straight out of the box or drink me a glass of water or eat some fruit instead because it'll be a better decision for me in the long run. Now, sometimes we make the bad decision to eat the Skittles anyway. Listen, don't get me wrong. I love some Skittles. I will eat the bag of Skittles, but I will also eat the spinach. I also eat an apple. I also drink some water and I also be smart enough to not buy the skittles if i don't buy them then i won't eat them but we all at times make instant gratification decisions some of us just make those decisions more often than others and some people live their whole lives 
based on instant gratification. Those people do not become successful. We all have the impulses, but again, those of us who have more discipline and who reach more success in life, we are just able, first of all, we're consciously aware that we're doing it. When I go eat some, some donuts or I get some cinnamon sticky buns from Niles Berry Farm or I eat those Skittles, I know exactly what I'm doing. I know that I'm making an instant gratification decision, but I'm all right with that. Why? Because I'm human. Now, at the same time, I'm still going to make some positive later delayed gratification decisions, which relates to episode number 777, which is also available only to gang group members. And again, you can get in the gang group for free, so which means all of you should be listening to it. Episode 77, 777 is about time perspective. Now, I've, I've referenced this episode several times back since that episode came out. And what time perspective is about is very simple. People who become successful in life, more successful than others, are those whose time perspective is further out than those who become less successful. Less successful people make short time perspective decisions. In other words, they make a decision based on what am I going to get out of doing this right now? Instant gratification. People who become successful, more successful individuals, they make decisions based on delayed gratification. I'm going to do something now that's going to pay me back in two years. Rather than I'm going to do something now that's going to pay me back in two minutes. So what is your time perspective? Because most of us want instant gratification. We all want, actually not most of us, we all want instant gratification. But are you wise enough, are you disciplined enough to delay that instant gratification until later because you understand there's a bigger payoff you can get for it? Most people's decision making is based on what they can get today. What they're going to get right now. What are the immediate results of my actions? That's how most people make decisions. Therefore, when the, the results, the achievement is not immediate to whatever it is that person would do or was thinking about doing or they've been asked to do or they've been challenged to do or they have a proposal to do. If the result is not immediate, most people will just abandon the mission because oh, what am I getting for this? I'm not getting anything for it right now. Why even do it? Why do this now when I can do it later? Right? That's how a lot of people, that's how most people think most of the time. And that's why most people are not successful. So this whole keep going part of this topic, because the topic is the winners are the people who keep going. This is about not when things are working, because unless, you are, unless there's something just wrong with the way that your brain works, it's very easy for any of us to keep going when everything's working. Or even a, an unsuccessful person, if everything's working for them, whatever they did to make things start working, it's easy for them to just keep doing that because everything's working. All right? and there's no need for me to even have this as a topic on this show if all I was telling you is just keep going when everything's working. All right? When everything's working, you don't need any advice. All right? You probably don't even fire up this podcast when everything's working for you. All right? I'm sure there are some people who started listening to this podcast not because you were looking for some ways to keep your success going, but because the success, the success wasn't there. It's been slow to arrive and you're like, wait, I need some help. I need, this is a challenge that I'm dealing with. I need something from my mind right now. You came to this show in a moment of crisis and you stayed because the material is just that good. I know. And that's why you're a member of the game group, right? So this keep going part is not for me to tell you, keep going when everything's working. Right? You don't need to hear that. You're doing it anyway. You don't need, no one needs to advise you to that. It's about when things are not working. When you have not yet received the gratification. I'm not talking just the instant gratification. The delayed gratification ain't shown up yet. You thought if you did this thing that you would get a result next year, but it's been about five next years since you did that thing and you still haven't gotten the results yet. That's what this, today, this episode is about. That's the keep going that I'm talking about. Because if all results were instant, there'd be no need for this topic. There may not even be a need for this podcast. If all results that every time we did something, we immediately got the payoff and the result. Listen, all of life would be different. And that success equation that I told you about that most people don't become successful, that equation will be completely different. I mean, think about it. Think about all the people you know. How many successful people do you know? Of all the people you know, what percentage of people are successful? Are more than half of the people you know successful or less than half? I'm going to venture to guess that 99% of you, more than half of the people you know are not successful by your definition of the word. However you define the word, most of the people you know don't fit it. Why is that? Because most people make decisions based on what they get now, not what they could get later. And that's really, that's a mindset. That's not about what they have, what they do, their talent, resources, or any of the excuses that instant gratification people make about always chasing instant gratification. It's not about any of those things. It's a mindset, it's a mentality. But that's a different subject for a different day. 
that we probably already covered if you just go into the 1300 episodes in the work on your game podcast archive and the game group but anyway point number two today's topic the winners are those who keep going not every this point number two not every long-term success is immediately apparent so this is a the reason why this is the second point is because i'm already i've already told you that time perspective making a decision now is going to pay off later but the challenge is you may be wondering well how do i know if the decision that i make right now is actually going to pay off later i mean you understand the whole concept it makes sense to make decisions now that are going to pay off later but how are you so sure that the decisions you make today will actually pay off later what if you make a decision today and you think it's going to pay off later but then two years go by and it hasn't paid off at all how do you know that you're not wasting your resources making a delayed gratification decision now not sure if it's actually going to be any gratification after the delay how do you actually know I'm gonna answer that in a moment. Let me give you a couple examples though. J.K. Rowling, who's the author of the Harry Potter series. I've never read one of the Harry Potter books, but I know everybody knows who Harry Potter is. So I'm using J.K. as an example. She first got the idea for the book in 1990. The first book, Harry Potter book, was published in 1997. That's seven years. All right, have you ever delayed your gratification for seven years to get an outcome? Now, it's, that's been, what, over 20 years since that first book got published. Now, there's been a whole lot of gratification after all that delay for J.K. Rowling, but she didn't know that was going to happen. She didn't know there was going to be this, this great 22 years of gratification after the seven years of delay. She didn't know that. Now, if everyone here, if you knew you were going to get 22 years of gratification after seven years of delay, everybody would have no problem delaying seven years. A book publisher even told J.K. Rowling that you know you're never going to make a lot of money publishing children's books, right? That's what somebody told her because that was the prevailing wisdom at the time. And nobody could have told him he was wrong because there was no proof that anybody could. But she proved it. Seven year delay. What, have you, what, it, what gratification have you ever delayed seven years? And everybody listening to this is at least seven years old, so you have no excuses. Jack Canfield. He and Mark Victor Hansen are co-authors or co-compilers, I guess we call it, of the Chicken Soup for the Soul book series. You ever seen one of those books, Chicken Soup for the Soul, and there's different souls, teenage soul, athlete soul, entrepreneur soul. Those, there are two guys who basically own that whole franchise. All right, so they're making a lot of money, I, I think we can assume the set. They did something. Jack, I heard Jack giving a speech once. And he said when the book first came out, it didn't really, it didn't immediately blow up. The Chicken Soup for the Soul book did not blow up when it first came out. It ended up on Oprah and everybody knows what it is now. Even if you never read it, you know about it. But when it first came out, it didn't do that. It was out, but it was, it was kind of, the response was kind of tepid. And Jack and Mark Victor Hansen, they said every day they would sit down with each other and they would brainstorm that we need to do at least five things every single day to get the word out about this book every day we're going to do five things to get the word out whether that's reaching out to some tv show send a free book to somebody uh write a, a blog post about it make a video every day we need to do at least five things to get this book out and they did that for years before the book really took off now chicken soup for the soul again everyone knows what it is even if you've never read the book but they had no idea these two guys when they wrote the book when they put the book out that it was going to become what it became so first of all that's a lot of effort just to put a book out not even knowing what kind of results you're going to get not knowing what kind of gratification you're going to get then after the book came out and it didn't blow up they said we're going to do five things every day so what is that that's a time energy and effort investment that they kept making every single day after the book came out to see if they can make something out of this book, or at least get it out, get it known more to the masses. That's an investment that they had to make up front before they even knew what was gonna happen. Eric Thomas. Everyone knows who Eric Thomas is, E.T. He's a famous motivational speaker. I think if, if you know the name, you know who Eric Thomas is. Well, E.T. and I did a video together. He was on my, one of my weekly motivation videos. I believe this is back in 2012-ish, around that time. And those of you who are watching me on YouTube back then, you probably remember seeing this video. If you haven't seen it, just go on YouTube and look up Dre Baldwin, Eric Thomas. You'll see the video there. And it's also in the game group, of course. Now, when ET and I were doing the video, I remember we were at the Miami Dolphins practice facility, which is up in uh, Davie, Florida, right north of Miami, about 30 minutes north of Miami. And we were outside of the facility filming, like right on the grass outside of the building. And as I'm setting up the camera, I remember the first thing I said to E.T. is like, yo, you know I do these in one take, right? He was like, oh, no problem. <laughs> and we did it in one take. And while I'm setting up the camera, we're just chatting. And I said to him, you know, 
I first heard of you when he had done this video or he was talking to some high school students maybe and he told the story that's become famous that you'll become a success when you want to what's the word you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe that's the phrase that he's basically coined it's basically become Eric Thomas's phrase since he said that in that video and I said that was the first time I heard of you when I saw that video of you talking in the school and it was really motivational and it obviously the video went viral and he blew up after that and I said so and that video had come out maybe around 2010 so at the time I was talking to him we were doing this weekly motivation video at the Dolphins facility this is 2012 so it was just two years later so I was like yeah I just heard of you 2010 so I said ET did you just start speaking in 2010 and he laughed he said Dre I've been speaking since 1992 and he said that in the video if you go look up the video again look up Dre Baldwin Eric Thomas on YouTube and you'll hear him say this in the video and he said he said that as soon as we started the video he was like Dre thought I just came out when that video went viral he said no I was out there speaking for 18 years before that video went viral and I'm telling you that to tell you to ask you a question the question that I already posed and I'm going to answer it how do you know that you should keep going? How did Eric Thomas know in 1998? He had been speaking for six years. He wasn't famous yet. How did he know to keep going? How did J.K. Rowling know in 1995? She had the idea for her book five years ago. The book hadn't even come out yet. How did she know to keep going? How did Jack Canfield and Mark Victor Hansen putting together this chicken soup for the soul book that came out and it didn't blow up? How did they know to keep working on this book instead of writing another book or going to find something else to do with their time? How did they know to keep going? How did E.T. know in 2001? He'd been speaking for nine years. How did he know to keep going? How do you know? Well, let me answer. If there was a black and white formula for knowing when to keep going versus when to quit, I wouldn't need to make this episode. So I'm, I'm sorry. Unfortunately, there is no color by numbers answer to how to know when to keep going and when to not keep going. Because if there was, was, a whole lot of things in life would be different, wouldn't it? But understand that since there is no black and white formula, since there is no one telling you this is what you should do, this is what you should not do. I know a lot of people look for those answers. Life doesn't work that way. Since that doesn't exist, understand something. That's the differentiator. That's the thing that separates the winners from the losers. What is it? Seeing what can't be seen and deciding to keep going anyway. That's the differentiating factor. What separates E.T., who started speaking in 1992, from 300 other motivational speakers who started speaking in 1992, and by 2010, we only heard of one of them, Eric Thomas. What separated him from all the rest of them? Was he just more talented? Was he just better than them? Was he more motivational? Did he have more information than them? Probably no to all of those questions. Probably not. Now, right now, you might look at it and say, no, maybe he was better than all of them, but he's better than them because he's still out. He's better than them. He's the only one doing it out of all of them. But there were probably some others who were better than him, had more information, more resources, more knowledge, had just as many stories as he had, but we don't know them because they didn't keep going. What separated J.K. Rowling from the other thousand authors who got an idea to publish a book in 1990? What separated her from them? She saw what they didn't see, which is why she kept going, and why in 1995, the last of them besides J.K. Rowling quit, she kept going. Why? She saw what they didn't see. Why Jack Canfield and Mark Victor Hansen keep promoting that book? Why don't they just write a different book? Because obviously this one ain't going to blow up. Why just write a different, forget the chicken soup for the soul. Why don't you write a different book? Maybe that one will blow up. Why did they decide to keep working on that one? Because they saw what everybody else didn't see. That's what separates the winners from the losers. If you can see your success, even before the success exists, then it's not hard for you to keep going. Maybe a little bit of a challenge, but you'll keep going because you saw it before everybody else saw it. I heard 50 Cent say this. He said, you know, you got to see yourself as a success before there is anything tangibly in your space that says you're going to become a success because then you become and then once you do become a success, now you're like you're a success story. Now you're a person everyone looks to and they use you as an example when they're on their podcast talking about how to know when to keep going. They'll use somebody who did it. But you have to be able to see it. You got to have a vision in your mind. Vision is different from sight, people. Sight is if you're watching this on YouTube right now, you can see my face. If you're, if you're on the podcast app and you pull up the app where you're listening to this, you can see that picture of me, right? With the microphone. That's sight. Vision is a thousand times stronger than sight. If you remember one thing from this episode, write down that phrase. Vision is one thousand times stronger than sight. Vision is what you see in your mind. Sight is what you see with your eyes. 
And the tangible world is very weak compared to the intangible. What we can touch and feel and hold and write down is nothing compared to what our mind can conceive. So when they, you hear the saying, what your mind can conceive and believe it can achieve, it's absolutely true because your mind can conceive and believe a thousand things for every one thing that most people achieve. That's the differentiator. Seeing what can't be seen and because of that vision, vision, not sight, vision, you decide to keep going anyway. Point number three, today's topic is the winners are those who keep going. But here's the kicker to all of this. Yes, there is, there's more. This keep going thing, this whole philosophy of keep going, even when you haven't yet gotten the success, keep showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you expect to achieve is yet to be achieved, it's boring. I'm not joking, it's boring to keep going. It is tedious to keep going. I guarantee you, J.K. Rowling has pages and pages and pages of balled up paper all over, or at least she did, back in the mid 90s, early to mid 90s, when she was putting a book together that became Harry Potter, because if it was just amazing from the beginning and it just popped off and blew up, she would have blew up in 1990 and not 1997. Eric Thomas gave a whole lot of speeches that he wasn't paid for, that nobody knew about, there were no cameras in the venue, and he didn't get too much instant gratification from it, but he kept doing it anyway. Mark Victor Hansen and Jack Canfield sent free copies of Chicken Soup to the Soul to a whole bunch of people who never responded to the free book that they received in the mail. Guaranteed. Thousands of dollars worth of books that they didn't get anything, no ROI from those investments. To keep going, and I'm not saying that to inspire or motivate you, I'm telling you this is what it is. It is boring to keep going. It is tedious to keep going. It is expensive to keep going. It's hard to keep going, especially when you're not getting any results. There's often no payoff for this, this delayed gratification. There's no payoff in the middle of it. All right, between 1990, when she got that idea for the book, and 1997, when the book came out, there was probably very little payoff for J.K. Rowling in putting this book together. Now, maybe she signed a contract, got a book advance, maybe later on in the process, but the first couple of years her putting the book together, there was no payoff. She didn't get anything from that. No magazine articles, no pats on the back, nobody telling her, yo, keep going, this book's going to be amazing. None of that. But she had to keep doing it anyway. You think E.T. ever drove somewhere to go give a speech somewhere and there was hardly anybody in the crowd, no cameras, no fanfare. He was still pretty much a nobody and he probably didn't really feel like giving that speech, but he gave it anyway. And he was driving home like, all right, how many times am I going to keep doing this? I guarantee you he had those days. And if you ever meet him, you can ask him. If he's listening, he can tell me. Guarantee. And you're going to have these days too. This is all part of the game that you're stepping into. There's no payoff for it in the middle. And as I already said, when you're in the middle of this keep going phase, here's the thing you need to understand. Sometimes, often, many times, it's going to cost you more to keep going than it's actually making for you. You're going to lose money keeping going. When I say cost you, I'm talking literally, metaphorically, any way you can put it, it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you more time than it's earning. It's going to cost you more money than it's making you. I guarantee Jack Canfield or Mark Victor Hansen spent more money giving that book away for free than they actually made off the book for probably a year before anybody caught on to that book. And they had no idea that anybody was going to catch on. That might have just been a sunk cost that they never got back. I told you that when I was playing ball, I invested thousands of dollars in going to exposure events. Those are places where a player goes with, so they can get seen and possibly, maybe, get a job playing pro basketball. I didn't know I was going to get a job from any of those exposure events. I didn't know anyone was going to notice. I didn't know I would get a phone call. I didn't know I would get a chance to go overseas or go back overseas, but I made those investments because that's part of the game. That's what you got to do. Jim Rohn, who's a, a famous personal development guy who was a speaker, entrepreneur, he would say when he first started doing this speaking thing that he would pay his own money just to get on the stage for a long time before anybody ever offered to pay him to get on the stage. There is no guarantee that you'll make back the investments that you're making during this period of keep going, so to speak. So the question is, are you willing to do that? And I'm sure a lot of people are nodding their heads. Yes. The question is, here's a better question, though. Have you done it? Are you doing it right now? Can you show the receipts? I'm going to leave that as a rhetorical question. Let's re recap today's topic, which is the winners are those who keep going. 
Life is short, but it's also long. Again, I'm going to refer you to these episodes that you can access in the game group. Episode 314, how to play and win the long game. Episode 254, long-term success requires long-term work. Episode number 232, how long are you willing to work without recognition? Episode number 116, winning in the long run. Today is about stick to it this. It'll keep you going. Point number one, most people want instant gratification. Refer to episode number 777, time perspective. Most people's decision making is based on what they get right now. So the keep going part is not about your immediate results. If you're getting results right now, it won't be hard for you to do it again. If you're not getting results, that's what we're talking about here today. If everything was instant gratification, there'd be no need for this topic, maybe no need for this podcast. Point number two, not every long-term success is immediately apparent. J.K. Rowling, I told you, Jack Canfield, and Martin Victor Hansen, Eric Thomas, all of these people who put in work for years on a project before it started to turn results, and they had no guarantee that those results were actually going to happen. And I guarantee you for every one of them, there's a thousand others who started at the exact same time who didn't get to that end game because they quit somewhere along the way. Question is, which one are you going to be? How do you know whether you should keep going or not? Well, if there was a black and white formula for it, listen, again, we wouldn't need me talking right now. The differentiator is your ability to see what can't be seen and deciding to keep going anyway. That is vision, not sight. Point number three. Here's the kicker. To keep going is boring. To keep going is tedious. To keep going can be expensive, literally expensive. It could actually be costing you more to keep going than it is making you to keep going. Jim Rohn, speaker, said he used to pay money to speak before anybody ever offered to pay him to speak. I told you, I spent thousands of dollars going to exposure camps, not knowing if I would ever make one dollar of that investment back. Can you do the same thing for your goals? I'm sure you're saying yes. The question is then is, are you doing it? Have you done it? Where are the receipts at? Work on your game. Dre all day.